Right. The first topic that I always talk about um, is templates. And I know I've done this for the last three or four years. By the way, I'll just go lateral a little bit. I think this is the 13th, 12th, 14th training seminar we've done, so we've been doing them for 14 years, which is quite a while. I was still in my 30s then and had all my own body parts. So it's a... Uh, and, and a few of you have been to each one and, and appreciate that. Uh, but templates, still easily, and Mark agrees with me here, probably the number one thing we help people with is templates. Uh, and I'm not going to talk so much about template design and that sort of stuff, but I'm talking about template efficiency and your template paths and, and, um, and making things work a little bit more uh, uh, efficiently by being a bit more judicious about your paths. What I'm talking about, so I'll start a job. So I'm, I'm going to come and go back and forth with these slides. One of the main things I see when I connect people with TeamViewer and I'm needing to help you is I don't know which template to work on. And it's very hard and, and paths are all over the place and people are loading a lot of templates their job, uh, per job. Many years ago, it's been many years ago now, templates sort of became live. You could, you could work on your templates and you'd, you'd immediately see results in, in form packs mode or, or if you're comp. So we'd load up when you open the job, you load up all the, all the templates and it holds them and it knows about them. Uh, but there's a price to pay for that. Obviously it's going to take longer to open a job if it's going to load uh, a thousand templates as to if it's going to open uh, ten. But not only in job open, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that, what I'm talking about and the consequences of it. Uh, open the iPad Pro. And TS Admin. As you know, you can enter template paths for different seasons, for different accounts and different workspaces, and there's different combinations thereof. But I really urge people to just use star, 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 so it's global. So you know if you want to template paths, that's the only place that you're looking at over there. Even with that, um, so that means you can just get to your template path a lot, lot easier. I tend to recommend you just have your paths available for every season, workspace and account. And if you want to make your template paths season specific, you can use at season code. Uh, you can use the wildcard and the knowledge base document for that, as we talk about every year, is, is, good, is a good example. But let's take it a bit further. I'll explain the complication. I often see this. I'm going to change my path. And I, I did see this just recently. There was a path like that that went to their template server, their God path. It's just the templates and all the templates were in that path, in subfolders, to be sure. So I'll show you what I've done with that. See, templates. Where are you, where are you? Um, oh, there we go. I should put my glasses on. 13 years ago, I didn't need these. Anyway, as you can see, I, I do, inside my, my master templates folder, there are lots of different folders for templates for different jobs, different seasons. I've got all sorts of rubbish in there. I've got some extra templates that I didn't know where to put them, so they're just in the root uh, path. There's also files that don't really belong in there, uh, like some graphic files as a T and J's. But basically, my path is going to look at templates, and then it's going to look at all the subdirectories, and then it's going to load all those as many templates that are in that spot. The upshot of that is when I open my job, doesn't really matter what job, we can set the clock on this, it's going to take a few minutes. Because it, in this ex particular example, it's loading several thousand templates, and let's say there are a couple of megs each, you, know, you do the math of what, you know, how much, uh, much data is actually being loaded. And then every time you move through the program, um, and go to form packs mode where, or, or the queue mode where it's got to be template aware or you process orders. It's looking through all those. And you see it t it's just taking a long time, even at this stage, even just opening a job on a laptop which has got 16 gig of RAM and it's local, there's no network involved here. If we've even taken the network out of the equation, it's slow just opening the job. And if I continue working 
there are issues with that. So let, let that finish and I'll show you the difference when we change things. People following what I'm talking about so far? Yeah? This is not an unrealistic example that I'm showing. Would you agree with me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Bill, yeah. Uh, you tend not to have as many graphics. I look at... Yeah. A job open? No. No, and as far as I'm aware, no. Yeah. yeah. So that opened, it took, what, a couple of minutes? A couple of minutes is not long in the scheme of life, but, you know, if you've if you got to open several jobs a day, it's, it's frustrating. And you saw Neopack, which is a lovely feature of Windows, um, telling you that it wasn't responding when it was actually doing stuff. So your operator thinks it's crashed and will end up, you know, complaining, asking you for help or restarting the computer when it was actually doing things. Um, so let me, I'll close that down and change my path to, to what I now recommend people do. And of course, my particular path doesn't matter. It's the concept we're talking about here. There's the root directory, C training templates, and then I use at plus. We know what at plus substitutes for? I'll answer so I can get my own chocolate. It, it substitutes for the job name. So when I open a particular job or I'm working in a job, it's looking in this spot, C training templates, and then whatever that job name happens to be. And I've organised the templates accordingly. C, training templates, and then each of those subfolders is a name of a particular job in my database. So when I open that same job, Dumo College, all the, on the only templates it's going to look at are the ones that are in Dumo's folder. Yeah. Well, thanks for picking up, uh, thanks for picking up the typo. Would you like the chocolate? It wasn't really a question, but it, sa it saved me the embarrassment. Now, if I'll open the same job. Yeah, Mark. Yes, there is. I told you. <laughs> okay. Open the same job. I hope I hear so. Yeah. And it, it opened in a matter of seconds, not several minutes. Now, you may think, big deal, open a job, doesn't really matter. But I'm telling you, it makes a difference all the way through your workflow. Now, the other thing you're now probably going to say is, oh, okay, Dino, but that means f I've got templates that I need for 50% of my jobs. Does that mean I have to you know, reproduce those templates and you know, make 50 copies of them? And I'm going to say yes. I, I've changed. You, you know, if you remember from the earlier training seminars, I used to say keep your templates as generic as possible so you can use them across as many jobs as possible so you have fewer templates. Well, like, like a good politician in an election year, I'm being opportunistic <laughs> and, and I'm changing my mind as it suits me. I, I now think that's a small price to pay. I would rather ha I'd rather just duplicate my template, that's easy, and move it into the job. So what I recommend people do is they have their central template server, but that's off, let's call it offline. And so there's all the templates that I own on some server somewhere. My work, the workflow is you start a new job, make a template folder for that job. It's the same name as the job. And then put the templates in it that it needs. You'll know at that point. If you have to add one further down the stream, add it. Copy it back, copy it over from your template server or make a new one there and then. It means that if, uh, it means you'll only load the templates you need to load. Um, everything works a lot easier uh, through the software. It means if you have to troubleshoot the template, it's far easier to go to the exactly the right template. It means the next year when you want to use the same templates for a, a new season, you just want to modify some of them. It, there are lots of advantages. Um, but because I talk about this every year, I don't want to spend as much time every year, so we'll wean it down. But if I go back to the, the slides, I did... So, summarise that. I think avoid 
We'll go control F5. Yeah. Like I said, avoid a single master path with all your templates and all your subfolders in that. That was the first example I showed you. Because it does cause uh, delays and instability as it's, as it's got to refresh and reread them each t in different places of the software. Uh, especially in somewhere like Fulfill, which is not job specific and it's, it's looking at everything. Um, uh, avoid paths in the specific seasons, workspace and accounts. As you saw with me, I had it in star, star, star. So you know that's the only place you have to go look for a path. You don't have to think, now what combination was it again? Uh, where's my path? So make use of at plus or at season code. Get rid of old templates. This is a biggie. If you've used the software for a few years, I guarantee you will have accumulated templates over time which, um, which you don't use anymore. So this is your good excuse to go and do a spring clean um, and, and, and get rid of the old stuff. Because we're, we're reading them for no reason. Um, don't, don't have files in your template paths that aren't templates. Okay, we, we don't make use of them, but we still have to check them. We still have to look at it and see that that file called a red.jpg, is that a template? No, the next file. There's no point, don't put your graphic in there. They're not templates, but we still have to look at them to make sure they're not a template. Just, we're just talking about seconds here, but they all add up. Um, and don't set empty paths, again, because we've got to check them and, and we get really confused. You put a path, no templates in there, I think something's wrong, which it is. So that, I'm summarising there. I did, I thought you wouldn't believe me, um, so I, before I left I asked three customers down under, more or less, um, who have helped with this, um, and I asked, tell me honestly, with changing your, your template structure, has it made a difference, and if so, give me two or three points of what, what's changed. And this is the feedback, these are direct quotes, uh, not necessarily in any order. One of those people is here, Karen, she doesn't mind me pointing, pointing her out. If you want to grab her at lunch and talk to her about the difference it made uh, to her, it, it's, it's enormous. Um, I love the last one. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it down there. We can now fix problems without you. <laughs> oh, if that was only true, that one. <laughs> okay. Any questions on that? All right. So let me... Let me uh, consult my notes. Mark, it's not possible to have lights just on, on me without, yeah? So it is very dark in this, this corner. All right, now, get out of that. What I suggest, if this is too big a leap, if you think, oh, I don't really want, to, I've, I've got templates that I use for every job, you know? Why do I really have to duplicate them for every job and put them in that folder? Well, in that case, do st I suggest doing something like this. Have another path for those, what I'm going to call, common uh, templates. And Marcus, is it possible to kill Adele as much as I like her music? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's, it's back there somewhere. It's built. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so there's there's an, an absolute path. The f what have I done? Ah, thank you. Too many. One was before I put the glasses on. The other one was after. Yeah. So now it's looking at two locations. The first path is going is job specific, courtesy of that at plus. Uh, the second one is a fixed path. You can see that. There's no variability about that at all. And in there, put templates that you're going to use for all if or most of your jobs. And it will look at those in combination with the ones that are sp uh, specific for, for a particular job. So I'll open just a variety of different jobs and I'll show you something else. Now, I... Having said all that, I know a lot of you aren't going to make this change or it's too late, you don't want to do it now anyway, um, and then you'll forget. So we introduced a tool that's going to help with your templates anyway. We have... Now, if you go to the help menu, something that will change the way you live. 
You will learn to love this thing. You will take it on holidays. A template report. Job specific. So opened, I've opened a particular job. I run a template report. And I get a report of all the templates that that job is seeing. There's a bit there. In the, the body of it are all the templates. Include the, there's the template name or a description, and in brackets a description if there is one. So for here I've got a, a template called bookmarks. It's bookmark one, but dot PIT, it's the description is bookmarks one. The type of template, portrait, and it's an item, or composite, and it's a subject block, group, and it's a page, are just a normal pack layout. It's key, the path that it came from, that's the path that it's in. You can see I've, I've got two paths, training and common. And very importantly, uh, any issues. Okay? The issues will tell you if you've got templates with the same key, because you know that's no good, because it'll have trouble finding them, or if a template's got the same name. Now, a template can only have the same name in two different paths, because that's a Windows file. You can't have a file in the same folder with two names. Um, so this is really handy. Like I said, you've already ummed and ahed and, and oohed and ahed, I should say, um, to be able to isolate those two quite common problems. Um, but you, you can do more in here. There's a quick, there's a text file search if you just need to quickly look up a template, start typing in there and it'll isolate it, or anything. It just searches that whole area. Um, if you only want to see your folders without the templates, check that little box, and they're the two folders that this, this job is uh, seeing. Um, if you're only interested in the issues, because your issues may be you know, up here, one of them's up there and its duplicate is you know, maybe down there, just filter it to show the issues only, so it isolates them. Down the bottom, what's really nice? Summary. Okay, my templates are in two folders, 110 templates. So this job is seeing 110 templates. And you may think, gee, that's odd. I know that school only orders about six packages. And then you think, aha, I remember Dino saying, only, only put in as many templates as you need. Maybe I can do a bit of a clean out and have a look why this job is seeing 110 templates when I only need 10. Um, and it tells you, summarizes issues. There's one duplicate uh, ID being the template name and uh, three duplicate keys. And then what's really nice is directly, whether, whether the thing's got an issue or not, um, you can just double click on it and it'll open the template without having to go to the, the template designer. <laughs> so, <laughs> thought you'd like that. <laughs> thought you'd like that. Um, and it doesn't be for issues. I found myself using this template report all the time. I said I fell in love with it because you know, I'm designing templates and examples um, to, to show here, and it was, I found it easier and quicker to, to get to the templates through the template report, and there's just open in the one I want, um, instead of going to the template designer, going open, browsing, opening it. Uh, so you will, you will learn to love this thing, and you can do it from any, any mode, any, any job. The um, oh, obviously in, in version 4.6, but I'll come to that uh, later when we talk about versions. Uh, so use it routinely, whether there's issues or not. I use it routinely to to find and and open open templates. It's it's far more efficient uh, that way. Bill, question. The search, no anything. It's any text string. Anything you see in that screen, in the main body, yes, you can search by key. Any text you're seeing down there, you, you can search. Search a any of those columns. Uh, now, the templates that you see have to, have to be uh, relevant to the program you're opening them in. So if, you, if you're running the template reporting Neo Comp, you will see Neo Comp's templates. You're not going to see Neopack's templates. Uh, likewise, in Neo Group, you're going to see Neo Group's templates. Neopack version 4.6 knows about comps and groups, which we're going to learn in the next two days. So Neopack 4.6 is also telling us about composite templates. See, that's a composite template. It, it knows about that. Uh, it can't open it in Neopack because it yet, because its template designer doesn't know about comps, um, has not the tools. That'll probably change in the future. So 
Neopack's the best place to run the report in terms of viewing all the templates that the job sees in version 4.6. And then you can open Neopack's templates. Uh, you'll really enjoy this one. It is like just about everything that's new in 4.6. We're well ahead of the curve with documentation. There's a knowledge base article already there, which you can get right now and have a read. Uh, probably does a better job than I just did in explaining it. Um, of the template report. It's pretty straightforward and I think you'll use it a lot. Yeah, before I leave template, so I'm talking a little, I've been talking about the quantities of templates. I want to briefly talk about uh, the templates themselves and template efficiency because this came up um, recently with a customer. I thought, oh, I should show people this because it was such, a, such an issue for them. I opened comp. Nothing special there. It's, it's one of my templates that you've seen every year. Have a feel of how quickly or how slowly, if in your opinion, it drew, um, it drew the, the page. Uh, it, that's, that's, that's pretty good. A customer had sent me a template to test a job, not for this reason, not to test the speed. It was this one. Um, and it was just... After we'd solved the problem, the problem had nothing to do with this template per se, I, and I, I'm I want to use their, t I was using their template as an example for something else. I was confused as to why it was taking so long to draw. See, it's taking so long to render just here on the screen. I'm thinking, well, imagine when it gets to printing. I mean, it, it's got to do it at 300 dpi. Here it's only doing it on the screen. And I thought, oh, it's probably just my images. I've got my images set at 4 meg, perhaps the preview sizes, and it's, that's why it's taking so long to... Uh, to draw. But that's not right because it's the same images as up here and they're drawing quickly enough. So uh, I always say if you have an issue you don't understand, it's either the templates or the data or both. Templates or data, templates or data. Uh, the data was identical um, so it had to be the template. But do you, do you see the problem? This is just one page, one comp, just on the screen it's taking an obscene amount of time to draw. So when they were complaining that it was taking a long time to render, um, you know, things got even worse. So we let me go to that template because I, I was a bit confused as to what was happening. And I got to it through the template report. Uh, which one was it though? Um, actually, I don't remember what it was though. Uh, original design one. that one. Okay, this, this was the template as, as supplied to them, not quite. They had a lot more layers on it. Uh, when, I, when I saw the template and the complexity and it had so much stuff on it, I got so frustrated um, and I just started opening up, I opened up the template and just started throwing layers off to find out what, what the offending thing was. Not unlike Peter at the airport when he's checking in and his wife's suitcase is, it, it's going to cost him $500 of excess baggage and he just rips it open and just throwing things out. This is what I was doing with the template. So I just started deconstructing it um, to get an idea of what was happening. There's the subject block area, that's, that, that's fine. There were a lot, there's, I didn't know what this was. It's, it's that, white, that white line and I'm thinking, it's a, it's a graphic with a, with a transparency just to put white lines on to get that. To get that white line above and below the blue this person made, has made a huge graphic with two white lines down the bottom, made the rest of it transparent just to put a border on a, on a graphic. Oh, golly. But it got worse. Let's just save that bit. Yeah, it's running again. Okay, so um, we know about that. At folder was just pulling in a graphic at folder one. Uh, and that's fine, but I also found there was at folder 2, at folder 3, at folder 4. And, and, th and those fields had graphics on them. They were being rendered as well, but at folder 1 was winning because it was on the top. But they were making this template as generic as possible. 
So if the job didn't have that fold, it didn't have a graphic in folder one in the field called folder one, it was going to use the graphic that was in folder two. If it didn't have a graphic in folder two, it was going to use the graphic in folder three. The trouble is this job had graphics in all four. So all four of those graphics were there, just three of them were hidden. Might be hidden, but we still got to render the thing. So again, that, that was slowing things down. Uh, we, we know about the lines uh, there. That, again, this big graphic just to put on the, that blue area. That blue area, whereas you know now you can just put a, uh, use the fill tool in our template designer to put a solid color on there or a gradient color. Um, they had put a big graphic on there. And then finally, this is the one that really got me. Uh, way down there, there's more layers that weren't being used. Or yeah, that particular one that I'm just moving is, if I move it to inches, is what size? About 17 by 12 inches, roughly. Um, it's the back. It's the background graphic. Basically, they had taken a photo of the school on a 20 megapixel camera. Right, um, and they wanted to use it on the, in, the, in the back of the, the composite. So you see in the background, there's a there's a, there's a shot of the school, but the shot of the school was huge. It was it was it was a big big shot. They on the on the template, they only wanted a small portion of that. So, r but rather than edit and crop it in Photoshop and end up with a small file, what they did was drag a great big graphic onto the template and move it off, off canvas. So the, the, the template is only, an eight by, is only 8 by 10, but they've put the graphic on almost at 16 by 20 so that they cropped just a little bit on. But again, we're having to, to render a 16 by 20 graphic, even though it's off canvas. So a collection of all those things ends up slowing things down when it, uh, when it drew, when it draws it. So c instead of doing that, it does that. I redid the template, and you can see it made it look exactly the same, and it drew a lot quicker, and it rendered a lot quicker. If you look at that template, um, what, what was that one called? New? New design one. Um, you know, we're th instead of putting a graphic on for the for the uh, for that blue box, that's using our our tool, add fill, add fill tool. Okay, <coughs> and you put a solid color on there. Then you can use our object effects to put the the outline on it, rather than putting another graphic on it for the lines. I went into Photoshop and cropped the background image before I put on the template. So that instead of now having a 20 megabyte file on that template, it was a it was much smaller graphic on that template. The template size shrunk from 30 megs to a smaller size. So we, we moved along and uh, made the whole template more efficient. It renders quicker. If you're uploading it to iOS, it uploads quicker. It moves across your network quicker. Everything, everything wins. So that's a rather perhaps a, a, an extreme example. Um, but it, it was a real-life example, so I thought I'd, I'd add that in to, to this morning's discussion. So to summarise that, resample the graphics before putting them to a template if you can. Um, make, makes the file size smaller, which moves it around your network smaller, uh, quicker and gets them uploaded quicker and helps with rendering. And try to not have layers on there that you're not using. That, again, um, that goes back to maybe it's better to duplicate the template and take off some layers that you're not going to use rather than have lots of layers on there that you're going to use only some of the time because uh, there's, there's a price to be paid. And in this example, again, remember we've got fill colour thing on to, to put uh, and object effects. You can use that for, for solid colours and, um, and outlines and borders and drop shadows.